I don't know all the rap words because I can't play my, but I can't pull up my lyrics and give it to you at the same time. <laughs> you know the hook? I know the hook when they start the hook, whenever they start the hook. Maybe you'll say it up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sing today, Mary. I'm not going to bless you with my voice today. He don't know the words. <laughs> I don't know the words. What's going on, Sister Lisa? I know this one. Ooh, child, things will get a little easier. Ooh, things will get brighter. Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. They'll get brighter. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, huh? Yeah, that's, that's the only part I know of this song, man. We, <laughs> this song is Keep Your Head Up by Tupac Shakur. Keep Your Head Up. Uh, kind of try to stay within the theme that what we're addressing tonight. Just going to give everybody a few seconds to get on, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Yeah. Yeah. Great song, great song. Why Tupac had to die? Who knows? Uh, who knows? Yeah. All right. Amen. Amen. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, what's going on, Deacon Richards? I see you. Uh, uh, let's just go to God in prayer. Uh, Father God, Lord, we thank you, thank you. Uh, just for being such an awesome God, Father. We ask you to continue to help us through this journey of helping people, being able to live alone, live by themselves, live single. Father God, yes. that whatever we learn, we can connect with you and 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 uh, I hope that you guide us along our journey of call life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so uh, just a few house cleaning. Uh, one, once again, we want to say thank you uh, for all those who contributed to our diaper drive. Yes. Uh, I think we was able to give like five over 5,000 diapers and over 11,000. 13,000. Uh, 13, excuse me. 13,000. Um, diaper wipes to cold pepper young lives so we thank Yay. you thank you thank you once again for helping us this year uh uh all the people that came out uh different folk that came out uh yeah. even people that came from other churches we thank you for helping us uh deliver those things uh we we, we counted all joy that yes. you was able to help us uh this sunday we will be back in the church we'll be at the holiday inn this sunday at nine uh we're going to have a great service. Please come out. We'll have singing. We'll have preaching, yeah. teaching. Uh, so please come out. Uh, also, I think this week is an awesome week. This is my birthday week, y'all. This is my birthday week, y'all. I'm about to embark on chapter 47. Uh, also, tomorrow will be my 28th anniversary of when I became a soldier. Wow. I've been working for the Department of the Army, whether as a soldier or a civilian, for 28 years. Tomorrow will be 28 years. And I still look good. Benefits. Benefits. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. So, uh, tonight, uh, we want to uh, embark on a topic as we kind of continuing our our rules or our kind of our um, encouragement of living on your own, being single. Yeah. Uh, tonight, we want to talk about parenting on your own. Parenting on your own, or what many of us call the single parent, the single parent. Uh, Sunday, uh, I lifted up a text in Genesis chapter 21, dealing with a situation with a mother, uh, Hagar, that happened to find herself in a situation where she went from being in a, a part of a connected family right. to now being a single mother, a single mother. But I think in order for us to really... Uh, uh, really deal with this and really talk about that, we need to really kind of be clear the difference between being a single parent mm -hmm. and a co-parent. Single parent and a co-parent. Or uh, what's going on, Pastor White? 
um, single parent, co-parent, custodial parent. To me, I believe there's a difference. Uh, and it's, it's a thing different. But what do you think? Uh, do you think there's a difference between being a single parent mm -hmm. or and being a co-parent? Of course. Um, when you have a co-parent situation, you still have both parties present in the child's life. Mm -hmm. um, both making decisions together. You know, both rearing of the children when you're co-parenting. When you're single parenting, which is what I did, you're all by yourself. So you're contributing financially, emotionally, spiritually. Everything falls on the one person. Right. So and, and y'all can chime in. Y'all can chime in and tell me what your opinions on it. Because I think a lot of times people will try to take that banner of single parent. And they're not really a single parent. Just because uh, you're the custodial parent and they live with you right. does not necessarily make you a single parent. Absolutely. Because if the other parent is actively involved, not just from a financial place, but from an emotional standpoint, they're 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 visiting their kids, taking you know handling some of the day to day activities. They're accessible. Right. Uh, there are other parents that's accessible for help or whatever. Right. I really would not classify it as a single parent. But also, I understand just because a person is financially giving as far as child support does not mean that they're co-parenting. That's right. Because that means you because you can be getting child support and still be a single parent. Mm -hmm. But we're so tonight we're kind of want to talk about single parenting from the aspect of. You're doing it alone. Yeah. You're doing it alone. No help. No no financial support or little no to little financial support. No emotional support. No uh helping out. It's just you and, God. and those kids. God and those kids. <laughs> okay. You and God. Uh, one of the subjects I think I really what's going on, Pastor Davis? Um uh, one of the things I really want, the text I really reach out is the story between Abraham. Sarah and Hagar. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a perfect example and a perfect story because one of the things this story tells us, I don't think any person, uh, any person in their right mind, really, or just any person in general, wakes up and says, I want to parent by myself. Well, now they do have. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I, I, no, I say any. I say in normal circumstances. Normal circumstances. In normal circumstances. I know, and I know people they want to have babies and all that. I'm not talking about them right now. Okay. Uh, but even in that, when they do that, make that decision, it's still difficult. They don't even understand the difference. But 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 for the but for the most part, most, part. most people do not want to parent their child by themselves. No. The I think the American dream. Or the family dream is to be married or be in a relationship, Absolutely. have kids, raise your kids together. I think that's the whole concept. And I think for some people, becoming a, a single parent can come from out of nowhere. Yeah. It can come out in so many different circumstances. You you have this ideal of one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have these children, there's probably nothing in your mind that's saying this ain't going to work out. This person's always going to be there. Or if I get pregnant or this person or have a baby, this person's always gonna be there. Even with men who are even with men who are uh, single parents, there's probably nothing in their mind that, hey, I was gonna have to raise my kids as a man. Because right. usually when you see the single parent narrative, it's usually the woman. Mm -hmm. So becoming a single parent can be a all of a sudden thing. Uh but how do we get here? How do we get here? Uh this story starts off really in um Genesis sixteen. This, this story starts off in Genesis sixteen. And the scenario is Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, God promised them a child. Uh, but because of their old age, Sarah couldn't have a baby. Right. So Sarah comes up with this concept. Hey, let's do this. Why don't you sleep with my servant and get her pregnant and we'll get our baby a promise. Hagar really probably didn't have a whole lot of say so in the arrangement. Right. But but the problem, but the bottom is the arrangement was she was going to sleep with somebody else's husband. One way, I'm going to say about a good 90% chance, there's a strong possibility if you sleep with somebody else's spouse and you get pregnant, you're probably going to raise that child by yourself. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the mismanagement of, and we talk about management of, how about we say the mismanagement of a relationship? Right. So where both parties are making bad decisions. Mm hmm because one thing, kids don't have anything to do with it. This is being a single parent has nothing to do with the child. It's not the child's fault. Uh, this is based on the mismanagement of a relationship between a man and a woman. 
This is classic mismanagement of a relationship. Because Abraham was married. Yeah. He slept with another woman based on what his wife... This should have never happened. Uh, and she got pregnant and had a baby. In Hagar's mind, hey, this man is going to always be here. Mm -hmm. We're always going to be a part of this family because this was their arrangement. But I just want to help you and share with you. Uh, when, and that's why we say you should not mess with married people. Because these are possibilities of real scenarios and situations mm -hmm. where people uh, will get pregnant. And I think we both know people where that were products of, of an affair and end up having, I mean, somebody had two families. Many We know people who are products. I'm not going to get into it because, you know, <laughs> people may be watching and, 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 and get mad. You tell all our business. But the reality, it happens. You know, where you got, you hear stories about men and women got families that nobody know about. Matter of fact, I, I can share this one because it's public. Uh, Terrell Owens, the football player. He's played for Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, he played for San Francisco 49ers. He played for the Eagles. Uh, when you listen to his story, his mother was having an affair with a, with a man in their neighborhood. Across the street. Across the street. She got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And this boy, Terrell Owens, grew up across the street from his father but never got a chance to meet his father. Grew up, so his mother was a single parent, and the father. No, his grandmother was a single parent. Well, his grandmother, so, and his father lived right across, right the, street, across the street. Right across the street. Because of mismanagement. Oh, yeah. So, what what do you say about, like, I know you was a single parent, mm -hmm. and some some decisions were made outside of your control uh, that put you in a position of being a single parent. <laughs> I know you shared before, but. How does the mismanagement, like, what was your thought when you had kids with this person? Like, what was your long-term goals or what you thought was going to be? Then, bam, all of a sudden, I'm a single parent now. Right. Wow. Um, when I got, well, my first baby I had was before we got married. Um, I was real deep into church, and my pastor had a lot of influence on my life. And so, um, the fact that we was living together kind of... Um, my pastor spoke with me about it. So I was like, um, we're going to have to get married or you got to move out. So we got married. So we had one baby. And then right that <laughs> soon as we got married, we had another baby. So my goal was to have a family, a husband, a wife, and children. Um, the marriage didn't quite go like I wanted it to. And I think I kind of stayed longer than I should have, trying to make sure that this family unit stayed together. And it just didn't work out. So it was kind of like, I tell the story all the time. People laugh. He literally said, I'm going to the store and never came back. <laughs> so I was, it was all of a sudden I was by myself. Um, at that time, I only had two kids. I had my daughter in 98. I had my son in 99. And then I didn't even know that I was pregnant when he left. So a couple of months later, oh, I'm pregnant. Here's baby number three. And all of my older kids are close together. And so, um, man, that was rough. I was depressed. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do with three little kids. I had two in diapers, one on the way, two car seats, two diaper bags. And it was rough. It was rough. But it was all of a sudden, um, even though it happened that way, I'm glad you know that it, it did happen that way because I didn't have the strength or I can say I didn't have, I wasn't smart enough to say that I can do this by myself. And it took God leading that man to leave me because I would have never left right. trying to make this family unit work. Right. And, and I think, you know, with this unit, uh, it was a very difficult unit because Abraham shouldn't listen to his wife, one. Mm -hmm. But now you got this young lady in a situation you have a blended family all of a sudden. And what happens is, and the reason why these situations don't work, because eventually Abraham has to make a choice between the two women. Not between the child and his wife, right. between the two women. He has to choose his wife. And a lot of times, that's why we, we, we caution people not to get in relationships with people that are already married. Because when it comes down to, they got to choose their wife. Yeah. And sometimes you're not the one that's chosen, even though you're the one having the baby. That's true. And not, and that's how a lot of time, and he can't be trying to, and then it's very difficult to navigate if you're the other woman or the other person and you got a baby mm -hmm. and 
his wife lets him freely go get that baby because there's always going to be some animosity there. Right. So now you're in a situation where the wife is uncomfortable because you bringing this. I don't want you to bring this baby over here, mm -hmm. and then he don't really want to go see his baby. And now you end up raising this child by yourself, right? Because because you made a mismanageable decision yeah. to have this baby, and and we have to be real careful with that. Uh, by getting ourselves in these, stop bringing folk extra people to the party. <laughs> by the way, <line>. yeah. <laughs> uh, so as they journey this relationship, what happens is. Uh, Sarah is upset. She's jealous. Mm -hmm. And what's obviously so, hey, this woman's around. You got a baby with her, but you can't. I can't have no babies. Then finally, she has her baby. So now you're in a situation where a lot of times, and, and we'll talk about how this feel is, and I don't know if you've ever been through this, but or, or you could kind of relate how, or how you could probably express how it feels when you have a child with somebody and they got a baby, a new baby, but all of a sudden, the attention that was on your baby is no longer. That's we talking about men with multiple baby mothers and stuff like that, or <laughs> or vice versa, and vice versa, and because it's hard to give everybody the right attention. But now this, is, so this man or this woman is in another relationship with their new baby, oh, yeah. and you got your baby by yourself. You're on the outside in trying to fit in, and you may be thinking, uh, "What's going on, Laura?" You may be thinking, "Well, heck, I should have known he already had a wife," but that doesn't change. Uh, that don't change the fact that you know I want my baby to be accepted, right? You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? I understand. I'm the baby. I got the baby. I'm the other woman. I got the baby, but I still want my. And I think how do women feel when a man is? It seems or it seems like he's showing more attention to his other children, and you're raising the other one. How do you think like would go through the women's minds or people's minds? Well, I can only imagine um, in that situation. If you have a wife and a husband goes and gets a baby with another woman and the wife and the husband decides to work it out, we always deal with the wife and her stress and her mistrust and her maybe she's not able to look at that baby. Um, so she wants the husband to focus the attention on her household right. and our kids. And so sometimes that leaves the outside kids. I'm going to have to find a new term. But the outside kids, it leaves them alone, to mm -hmm. grow up alone, to, you know, um, want to be with their siblings, but they can't. And it's all because of this wife who chose to work it out, but it was the conditions of working it out without this woman and her baby. So the conditions was that it's either me and none of them. Right. And so a lot of women, a lot of people end up becoming single parents because the other parent has to make a choice between them and their kids. Yeah, so I'm going to keep my family or I'm going to choose my mistake. Mm, and a lot mm. of people will choose their family and then choose to forget their mistake. Right, but understand there's still kids there. Yeah, the kid, you know, right. I wouldn't say the kid was the mistake, but the act. No, but of, I'm saying, yeah, but the, but kid, the act of what but they the kid did. Is still but the kid is the one and that the, suffers, and, and that woman still suffers because you got to take care of that child and try to be able to explain to that child yeah. why we were, we were why neglected. we in this situation. And, and yeah. that's the thing about uh, that about parenting on your own is mm -hmm. that yeah, that person you may have had a baby with somebody. Whether they took care of their own other kids, because you knew it's beside, you can be say, well, you shouldn't have had a kid with them. You know they weren't no good. It's beside the fact. You got, <laughs> the bottom line is you want somebody to help you take care of your child. Right. Or like for example, with some men who are single parents, you know they're they're taking care of kids because either the mother's not fit, maybe she's on drugs, maybe she yeah. passed away, and and it's a lot of stress thinking that hey, I'm trying to raise these kids, but at the same time, I got to try to figure out, explain to them why the other parent is not around. Right. Why the other parents spend more time with this kid, or, or why this parent? You know, it's it's a, it's a lot of emotional. Yeah. Dip. But but so what happens is, Abraham gets a sister. Now Abraham, what we have is what we call baby mama drama. <laughs> this is what we have. So Sarah gets mad because Ishmael makes fun of Isaac. Something totally normal. Uh, let me let me let me yeah. I, let, let me let me put a pin in it real quick. I know we're not talking about blended families, but here's the thing. It is normal for siblings to pick on each other. When they're little. And I think parents got to sit up here and try to, they got, well, even when they're older, they, yeah, my kids. People still be picking on them. Kids, that's what me and my brother, we, yeah, I talk about them all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what we do. That's what siblings do. But you can't, you know, but this was the first time where Sarah, because this baby was supposed to belong to Sarah and Abraham. Right. But because Sarah had an issue with Hagar, she once she got her baby, mm 
Mm-hmm. Ishmael was no no longer a part of the plan anymore. Once she got her own baby. Right. Because the, the whole purpose was Ishmael was supposed to be their baby. Right. She but was he, having the baby for them. But now you got your own baby. Oh, you need God. to get rid of. And a lot of times we have to be careful that we're not making, and ladies and men, that we're not making people single parents because now that you got your baby with this person, you don't want them to, to chill out with their own babies. You don't want them to spend time with their own babies. Because sometimes we can create people, that situation, and put a person in. Because even if it ain't even an affair, it's just the fact that he had children before you. But now you got your baby. You don't want him around your baby. Hey, I just want you around my baby. And now yeah, this woman, cool. now this woman got to suffer. Because the bottom, now she becomes a single parent. Where it used to be co-parenting. And all of a sudden, hey, I can't fool with you because my wife thinks I'm still messing with you or vice versa. So now she has to leave. She leaves. This is where I want to get into the deep part about single parenting and mm-hmm. the and the, the the meat of it and we got some time the meat of it mm-hmm. so what abraham does he he god tells him listen to your wife yeah. tell her to leave now mind you hagar was already in an abusive situation now she had to leave anyway because she was already abusive because sarah uh, was very abusive to her mm-hmm. let's be clear you might be saying well sarah's in the bible she had bottom line is if you're yeah. in the bible doesn't that Having your name in the Bible does not exempt you from being wrong. Punches Pilate. <laughs> yeah. Punches Pilate's in the Bible and he was dead wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, let's be clear. Just because your name is in the Bible does not mean you're holy and all that and you're perfect. Abraham and Sarah had some all issues. All perfect people. Right. So, uh, Sarah said, you got to go. She got to go. Mm-hmm. She leaves. Now, this woman was a part of a family mm-hmm. for like 12, because I think I was almost a teenager for about 14, 15 years, maybe even longer. She was a part of this family. This family unit under the protection of this family, and all of a sudden, me and my husband, me and my son got leave. We lose everything. Because right. basically they lost everything. They had a place to live, they everything. Now they're on their own. And this is what he does. He he gives her, he gives her some food, he gives her some water, mm-hmm. but it's not enough. How many times, like as a single mother, you might get some assistance, a little bit of assistance from somebody, whether it's from the count, from the from the from the system or uh, maybe child support or whatever. And what a lot of people don't realize being a single parent, it's not enough. Sometimes it's not enough. But... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I had three kids, three little kids. And I didn't get child support for any of my kids until I think my oldest was like 10 years old when I got my first check. So before that, you know, everything I had to buy was times three. And I didn't have anybody to, you know, come. Wasn't no little bit of nothing. <laughs> it was me working. and not, Or God. God put people in my life to, you know, bless me with the things that I need. He always made a way. Right. But um, I don't think the children understand all the things that you go through. When you're talking about, hey, girl, cried out. There were many nights that I cried out. I didn't know how I was going to feed my kids. Sometimes I fed my kids. I didn't eat. I always, you know, had to make sure they had clothes and shoes and everything. And it was a lot of times that I went without just so they could have. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's it's rough sometimes. But, but how is it? And, and y'all could chime in on this, Laura, and I know you was in there. But how is it? I give you child support. You get a check. You give a sister. How is it not enough? And, and and people and you'd be surprised people think that way and they say these things. Oh yeah, I, and they I, say these. Well, you well, how what you doing with your money? Why you know? And and people actually say these things to people. Do. Dude, I didn't heard dudes. Well, I, why should I have to give you any more money so you can go get your hair done? But not realizing, yeah, Abraham did what he could, but it was not enough. And and, and I think yeah. how do how do women navigate? When, and I know it's got to be frustrating when, when you're telling people, hey, I need help, I don't have it. Right. And they're saying, well, you got this, you get food stamps, and you get this, or yeah. or whatever. And, and and it's and it's still not enough. And, and it makes it seem like you're a mad, you're mismanaging money, but you're not really it's mismanaging. It's not enough. Yeah, it's just a lack of resources. Um, was, that, Laura said, that check is crap. Right. Because <laughs> um, I was thinking about, I was getting like $147 for three kids. What am I going to do? What the <laughs> do it? $147. But they think that's enough. They, yeah, don't ask me for no shoes. Don't ask me for no nothing. And and this is the kicker. Because my ex-husband was out of town for 10 years, um, <laughs> and he got away, I forgave all them 10 years of child support. 
that I didn't get trying to be a good person. Mm -hmm. So from when I finally got a check when my baby was 10 years old, he had an attitude like he was doing me a favor. <laughs> I'm like, you missed 10 years. So, <laughs> and so, so, cause like I said, you know, and people think, you know, when these kids, they, well, why they shoes run down? Why they got high waters? Dude, kids, that's a, them resources run out cause kids grow. And I think, and, and I, and I celebrate single parents as male and female that's doing it on their own mm -hmm. because it's like, you know, people are judging you. Oh yeah. You get this. You get that. You get free daycare. But to be honest with you, free daycare don't feed your kids. Mm -mm. And and I think in this situation, they ran out. Yeah. Abraham might have thought he was doing and then here's the thing also, it's not always about money because it has to be about that emotional support from the other parent. It's not always about money. It's about your presence. So now because of yeah. their mismanagement, and that's what another shell shock what single parents gotta deal with. Whether it's a divorce, whether it's separation, whether it's a uh, breakup or death. Mm -hmm. This boy had his father around for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And now 12, I think it was 12, 13 years. Now all of a sudden, no him. more. So she got to explain to him. Right. How, like, and, and, and I think it's like, how does a mother or a single parent have to explain to a kid? Hey, your parent, this is the situation. Cause they're going to ask, Hey, how, how yeah, what happened? Like, yeah. Um, you know, I think that's rough all in itself, even if you have to explain where the other parent is, but just even the frustration of the lack of resources, the lack of emotional support, because sometimes women don't have the emotional support. When you're raising kids, it takes a lot, especially when they're small and you're up at night changing diapers or when they're sick or when they're this and you don't have anybody else. That's frustrating all in itself, but you can't let the kids know that you're frustrated. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, she had to explain to this boy where his father was, but at least he had him for a while. Some people don't ever have him. Right. And so when they get grown, of course, you know, I want to know where I came uh, from. That's good. I'm glad you brought that up. And I, and I want y'all to chime in. That's a good question. Is it easier to be a single parent when the other parent has never been around? Or when the parents been around and just left, mm -hmm. you know, I will wonder or died or whatever. You know, I wonder what 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 is easier. Uh, I think that would depend on the age of the child. Okay. I know my two, my older kids, when um, we broke up, I think they were four and three, and so yeah, he was always around and he was more present than I was because I worked and went to school, and so yes, when he left there was a void because they were always with him. Right. So now, you know, we were her. She mean. <laughs> so it after a while, they kind of, you know, gravitated to, you know, it was only me. Mm -hmm. If they're older, I think that would be harder to explain to a kid, you know, what happened because all of the outside external influences on kids, you know, at school and mm -hmm. on TV, what happened to your, you know, what happened to our relationship? Because right. ultimately, that's what it is. What happened to our relationship? Why did you and daddy break up? Did he cheat on you? Did you cheat on him? Right. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's rough and some kids when they're be, older. Right. Some kids can be real disrespectful. <laughs> so, but, so what happens, she runs out of this stuff. And like you said, she goes, she cries, she hides because she don't want yeah, to see her son. She don't want to see her son struggle. She don't want to see, because any good parent, single parent. And what happens is, is that. Uh, God shows up mm -hmm. and, and he gives her some vision. Ooh. How give her vision. He gave her vision and she and she uh found some water, found a thing. Question about vision. How important is it? It was a not going to run, run in and out. That's damaging to a child. I didn't allow it. Yeah, so you don't want dudes coming in and out of their life. Sometimes right. you gotta check. It's, it's disappointing. So, and I'm gonna get into that. But one of the things I wanna ask is how important is whether you're a single father or single mother? That you got to have vision. You got to be able to... Vision is nothing but the foresight of seeing things ahead before it happens. When you're a, sing, a truly a single parent with no help, how important is the vision? Because now you got to try to uh, not only financially take care of them, you got to take care of them emotionally. You got to try to plan their future and try to get them yeah. through school. In other words, you got to set a vision for them. That's true. And, and sometimes you got to come up with a vision on how you're going to make yourself better. Because look, I can't continue to live like that. So how important is... A single parent to have some type of vision to hope. In other words, you don't have the time to really sit and mope and cry. You got to start <laughs> coming up with a. Basically, when you have vision, you got to come up with a plan. Right. Um. I think what I did, um, as far as coming up with the vision, 
I, I settled in my soul. I might be by myself. So what I did was I started on my credit. Because I was like, if I can get myself in a better place um, financially, you know, that'll take some of the pressure off of me. Um, and then I started going to school. I was like, you know, eventually I get through with school. I get a better job. I can take care of my kids better. Um, the vision just comes from working on yourself because you want to show that your kids that you can do it and there are greater things that they can do. Right. Like even in this late age and I'm, you know, just now finishing school, I didn't really do it for me. I did it to let my kids know it's never too late. Right. right? So the vision comes from God and I think God provides all, but I do know the importance of a vision. But when you get a vision, you have to, what they say, write that thing down, make it plain. Right. How, what is my steps? How am I going to make the life better for me and my kids? How am I going to make sure we eat? How am I going to make mm -hmm. sure I'm financially able to buy them clothes and shoes and coats and, you know, whatever they need? Um, it's it's challenging, but a vision is necessary. Vision is necessary. Good planning, mm -hmm. proper planning. Right. So then she goes, he tells her, Ryan, lift up the boy's hand, hold his hand, and I will make him great. And basically she trusts God that mm -hmm. I'm going to guide my child. Holding his hand is guiding them, lifting them up, encouraging your kids, even as a single parent. Uh, you can, but this is the thing I want to hit, and it's going to take some time because I want to hit. They got what they need. Mm -hmm. They got what they need. He becomes a great young man. He becomes a great young man because here's the thing. I want to be clear with this, and I said this Sunday. Uh, I don't want to hear that a woman cannot raise a boy to be a man. There are too many successful men out here right. that are doing well. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some certain aspects uh, that he can learn from a young man. But the bottom line, you're going to become a man regardless. 18. Guess what? You turn 18, he ain't no man. But guess what? If he get in trouble, they're going to treat him like a man. Sure, yeah. So uh, they're going to take him to jail. <laughs> so, but the reality is I've seen so many, that, that so many people say, well, a woman can't raise a man. Mm, I don't know because I've seen some women do better jobs. Or, for example, a, a, a man, a single man can't raise a young girl. I've seen it done. Mm -hmm. I've seen it done. And here's what I want to talk about when we have to cross the line of being a parent. So in verse 21, in chapter 21, it says, he dwelt in the wilderness of the of Quran. His mother took a wife for him in the land of Egypt. And that time, it was the father's responsibility okay. to find the wife. But because of the circumstance and the situation, she had to take on that role <laughs> for him. And how diff and I remember, you know, and I want to talk about how difficult it is that sometimes as a single parent, you have to take some roles of the other parent that usually if that parent was there, they would do that. For example, I remember when Colin first started playing football, I was gone in Virginia. We weren't even married yet. You didn't know nothing about football, how to, but you had to figure out how to sign up. Something that usually a father would do, right. you had to try to figure out sign football, figure out how he supposed to wear his equipment. Do his yeah. <laughs> so kind of explain those times where... Uh, you had to jump into roles that usually the father that that we stereotypically think that the father is supposed to roll or vice versa. Like young men, men who raise their daughters on their own, when she's going through her cycle, he has to sit there and explain that to her. And that's something that usually that the mom because he may not have another woman in his life, and he shouldn't just bring any woman in there. Okay. He he has to deal with that conversation right. about the cycle or learning how to do hair and stuff like that. So let's talk about. When, as a single parent, when you have to cross over and fill that, like I said, that void right. that usually that other parent would do. like, Yeah, it's funny that you brought up Carlin playing football. <laughs> I had three girls. Well, I had two girls and a boy. He was my only boy. So I wanted him to get into some boy things. But, of course, you know, I never played any sports. So I didn't know anything about nothing. So, so I tried to do my little research. I found this little team, the Twisters. So I had to figure out how to sign him up. And then when we went to get equipment, I had to ask the coach, like, you know how I put this stuff on? Yes, <laughs> I did with my boy. That football something. Yeah, man. And it was just because I wanted him to be around some other boys. And if he would have had a father in his life, maybe, you know, he could have taken that on for him. But he didn't have that. Like so somebody, somebody just take him to get a haircut. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. When I got divorced, my ex husband's brother was a a barber, and so he told me he was like, "Bring Carla by anytime. I got you. I got you." But of course, when people are doing something for you for free, 
you know, that runs out. I ain't know where to go. <laughs> I ain't know where to go to no barber. So I went to this uh, beauty school and I met a guy and thank God he just, you know, took Carlin in. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't have to worry. I mean, of course I paid, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do about getting his haircut. And Carlin actually had um, cornrows for a long time because we didn't cut his hair. Right. So finally just getting into that was rough. But that football and that finding a barber mess is for the birds. <laughs> I was glad when I met yeah. you. <laughs> and, 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 it, and it's difficult because you have to you have so, to. something that's normally somebody's stereotypical role. Right. And I, the reason I'm saying stereotypical because the woman doesn't, the man doesn't have to do those things. A woman can do those things. Right. But the reality, those things people don't think about when you become a single parent. Like men. Uh, like I said, men who have to raise their daughters on their own. Like I said, you have to have a conversation with your daughter about uh, menstrual cycles and, and all that. I remember even, and I was a single parent, but you know what was one of the difficult things when I was with my girls when they were little? What? When they had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I had to take them into the men's bathroom oh, with yeah. me because I couldn't let them go to the bathroom by themselves. Right. So so now you, you so it's it's very di some things are very difficult because you have to cross. So what she say did that too and got hit on every on every man there probably in the barbershop. Yeah. Well, yeah, the barbershop. But for me, when I put my son on that football team and you were already gone to Virginia, we weren't married yet. There were some dads that were trying to help me because they knew I was a single mom, but the help came at a cost. Oh, give me your number. You know, I know you're with your son. You're struggling. I can show you how to do this. I can take him to games. I can do this for you. But then they want to, you know, talk to you late at night. It wasn't an innocent. I'm trying to help you. So even when you're trying to be a single parent, father, whatever, there's up people of the opposite sex always trying, trying to take advantage. advantage. Right. To, they think right. They, they say they want to help, but they take advantage of it. Right. You. And, and and so she had to find him a hook, find him a wife, mm -hmm. take on another role, take on that other role, and that can be very difficult yeah. when you're trying to parent alone, take on another role. It's necessary. You have to do you it. Because I even know some young ladies who grew up to be some awesome young ladies who was raised by their fathers or their mm -hmm. grandparents or their grandfather. Yeah. It can happen, but the reality is is that it's going to be difficult. And and our goal is to try to help you not mismanage your life that you be in those situations. Because that's not the ideal situation and it's not the godly situation that God because right. the structure because God wants to struggle, but it happens. And but those people who are single parents doing it on their own, man, God bless you. Yes. Uh keep doing it. God is with you. God is encouraging you. And 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 always stay connected with God. It's, Absolutely. You know, uh, it's hard. Uh, then it, now let me ask this. So now as we get older, you have people still single parenting when their children are adults. <laughs> oh, yeah. and what I mean by that is when, and this is why it's so. This is why it's so difficult, man. Because even when they become adults, when that father's not around, and that young lady gets married, who's walking? Who's walking that girl down the aisle? Mm -hmm. That's something that single mother has to worry about. When that father who's raising his daughter because maybe her mom died, he got to try to help her get wedding dresses and put all that stuff. He has to fill that void. Right. And it and it can be difficult because a lot of times those situations bring up memories that are hurtful for, for you. Because you're thinking like, man, this sorry person didn't even... <laughs> yeah, couldn't even come... He wasn't daughter, even around. Couldn't yeah. even give his daughter away. And yeah. Now, let's ask you this, and this lastly. Let's last. So... And we can laugh about it. Y'all can be honest with you. Don't, don't. Just... You don't raise this kid <laughs> by yourself. By myself. <laughs> and this child gets grown and gives praise and honor to the other parent. <laughs> don't do it. I want, I want my daddy. Or I want my mom. They give. And then what happens is the parent comes around. Everybody's excited because the person's parent <laughs> come around the whole family, and you know that person ain't, ain't did nothing. nothing. But everybody, who they're good daddy, they're good mama, or and your kids like, and they kid like, and all of a sudden you just got put on the back burner. And I see this so often <laughs> with single parents when you're looking at your kids and like, dude, I'm the one that it, it, yeah, I'm the or, one that didn't or, eat so you could eat. They disrespect you, but they love they, but their other parent, oh, they they show so much respect. Mm -hmm. How does that make a single parent feel? And what what advice would you give to that parent when that happens? I, wow, yeah, <laughs> I mean, what right, they, Lord said, Lord, yeah, we talking about make a preacher cuss. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've experienced that. Um, now I just try to take it. You know, at first it was hurtful. I was like, this 
Negro can come around. You ain't seen him in 10 years and not, you know. And my daddy, my daddy. Your daddy wasn't there when you was hungry. Your daddy wasn't there when you needed this. <laughs> I mean, I could talk all day. But um, now, as I've gotten older and matured, I take that stuff with a grain of salt. Kids, they're so finicky. They go with the flow. You know what? They with them. You the best daddy. They with you. You the best mama. So I don't even like, you know, anybody to let the kids do what they want to do. They the favorite parent. Right. right. So if I have to be the bad guy, it is what it is. But I know I did the best I could. Right. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to go. I know a lot of people may agree to me. <laughs> even as a single parent, let me, let me just be honest with you. Your kids don't owe you nothing. I think a lot of parents, they think that they did on their own, that their kids owe them something when they get older. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, they didn't ask to be here. That's true. They don't owe you nothing. That's what I be saying. Them kids don't owe you nothing. No, I'm talking about to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I don't owe you nothing. Yeah, they don't owe you nothing. And I think that's hard. For, and I get it. And I get it. Because you don't raise this kid, did everything, sacrifice, and then mm -hmm. they get grown and get brand new. <laughs> You know, uh -huh. but the reality is they don't owe you nothing. Because that was your job. Not, they didn't hire you to be their parent. God put you in that position. And God will reward you for the time and effort you put in your child. So, uh, uh, so yes, they're going to be disrespectful. Kids are disrespectful. They got both parents. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's, 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 uh, uh, but you have to manage it. You can do it. I'm, I'm done. Uh, uh, we're done, Lori. Anyway, hey, ha thanks for coming on. What's going on, Sister Kim? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's a journey. Single parenting is a journey. Yes. It's a journey. Uh, it's, it never stops. Mm -hmm. uh, always cause, learning. Because you're always parenting till the child get old. Mm -hmm. But it's rewarding in the end. Right. In the end, being able to see them be successful uh, and be able to look back and know that it was nothing but God oh. that helped you through it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing but God that helped you through the tough times. The things when they go through teenagers by themselves and you're the bad... Because there's no good cop, bad cop. You are the bad cop. Mm -hmm. You are the bad parent. You are the mean mom I and daddy. I hate you. I hate mm -hmm. you. They don't, nobody, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, nobody gets that but you. Right. You, know, you make me sick, mm -hmm. you know. But at the end of the day, when they get older and they mature, the Bible says that if you raise up a child the way they should go, mm. they'll never depart from that. Yeah. And when you raise that child with character and integrity and you're doing your best, when they get older, they start looking back. They may not know it at 20, 21, because they're still young and still, but when they get older or start having their own families and they start looking back, they're like, hey, you know what? Thank you. Thank you. I know I know we didn't have this and you can do certain things, but I, now that I look back, you did the best. You know, even though they'll thank you, hey, I realized what the situation was going on with you and my other parent and I knew you had to get out of there yeah. and you had to get out of that situation. I see why you didn't let my other parent come around me because it was a negative and they would, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I get it. You know, I didn't get it when I was young, but now I get it. And eventually it will pay off. All of that will pay off. But listen, we don't want to assume that everybody knows God. Uh, we want to extend this invitation to you that you can accept Jesus Christ as your yeah. Lord and Savior. Uh, if you don't have a church home, uh, if you don't have a church home, uh, we would love you to be a part of the Moo Church. Got to move. Uh, be a disciple and a partner here. Uh, just send us an inbox email whatever you know just reach out to us and you can be a part of our our awesome ministry uh if you like you know you like what you heard you like to donate tithe or give or you're looking for a ministry to donate to so we can continue our outreach efforts you can do that at our cash app at dollar sign got to move or p.o box 2022 cold Pepper, virginia 22701 right. uh so listen uh next week next week we're gonna talk about getting out of toxic relationships Staying in, you know, why are we staying in toxic relationships? Why you need to get out of toxic relationships? Because there are some relationships, man, that got strong hold on people. You you just trying to figure out why I can't leave. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and we're gonna talk about that. What what are the what are the things that's tying you and and it, or entangling you into toxic and bad relationships? Right. Why do I keep staying in this thing? I and I think we've all been there, mm -hmm. uh stayed in a relationship longer. Than we should have. And we're going to talk about that next week. Especially as single people. We ain't even talking about married folks. We talking about single folks staying in relationships they ain't got no business staying in. So we're going to talk about that. When to leave. How to leave. Or whatever. Uh, you have anything? 
Only thing I can say is from your sermon on Sunday when you say you holding on to God and you holding on to that kid and you trying to bring them together. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. I will not let go of any of my kids and I'm holding on to guys and changing hand and I'm just trying to bring, bring them, them together. together. Trying to bring them I'm together. not going to let go. So yeah, Don't let go. They'll they eventually get there. Just hang. See, while you hanging on to God, you hang on to your kids. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> And that is me. <laughs> yeah, so you hang on to listen. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming and hanging out with us uh, today uh, with Ronnie Lynn, uh, our mm -hmm. executive pastor of Got to Move. Uh, thank y'all. I hope you have a great week. Uh, Father God, Lord, we thank you uh, for this time of study, Father. I pray for their safety for everyone that has joined us yes. tonight, Father, everyone that will look on this further in the future, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless May God you. keep you.